Chances are you've heard about the food pyramid. It's the government system of teaching us how much we should be eating and what kinds of things we should be eating. It was developed by scientists and doctors. It's been taught in our schools for years. But two years ago, the food pyramid got a makeover and it went high tech. So what does it mean and how can it help you? We have a special guest with us today, Amy Deal Greenlaw, registered dietitian with the Food Trust, a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting access to affordable, healthy food. So, Amy, first thing I think we have to say is the Food Pyramid has a website. It's www.mypyramid.gov. And it's my pyramid because because it is meant to be personalized. It is not one size fits all. It's male or female, active, not active, young, old, it's meant to be individualized now, which is a wonderful um, new addition to the pyramid. Terrific. We have a graphic that shows you what the basic food pyramid looks like, and, and tell us what's included in that. Well, let me point you over here. We have our, our wonderful brand new pyramid here, and like I said, it is called My Pyramid, and if you just double check on the name, you'll see that my pyramid does not have a space between my and pyramid. It is one word here. So if you do go onto the website, make sure you don't put a space in there. And it's got all the food groups listed, the same five food groups that have always been on the food guide pyramid, just look a little different. We've got the grains, the vegetables, the fruits. We have a little skinny yellow line here that represents oils. It's not a food group, it's just a part of a healthy diet. We have the milk, the milk and um, yogurt and cheese group and we have the meat and beans group but the big thing to note on the new my pyramid is the graphic of the person running up the stairs because we have put in physical activity into the food guide pyramid that's and that's certainly very important it's very important let's go through the mm -hmm. different groups okay. and explain mm -hmm. to us how they're set up a little different with measurements and servings things yes. like that things have changed slightly okay um, the first group is the grain group Okay. And um, the big difference with the grain group, and you can see with the, with the graphic also, that the grain group is the largest food group in the, in the pyramid. Okay. Because it represents the largest portion of what we should be eating. And the grains are divided into two categories, the refined grains and the whole grains. And we have three examples here of whole grains. We have a slice of whole wheat bread. And the um, grains are listed in ounces or ounce equivalent. So one slice of bread is equivalent to one ounce. Okay. Um, a half a cup of cooked cereal, this is oatmeal, this is a whole grain, oatmeal is a whole grain, is one ounce equivalent. And then we have a flake cereal, and that's about a cup, and that's also going to count as a, as a one ounce equivalent. We have a refined grain here. We've got pasta. It's white pasta, so it's a refined grain. Okay. And that would be one um, a, a, an ounce equivalent and as well. And how do we know how many of these we're allowed to eat or are supposed to eat, I should say? Well, when you personalize it, you'll get a calorie level, and each calorie level is divided up into different food groups, and it will tell you how many um, ounces or cups that you need from each of those food groups. So we go on to the pyramid that and we correct. find out how mm -hmm. many slices of bread, exactly. for instance, whole grains. Okay, let's keep moving through these. The next okay. group. The next group on the pyramid is the vegetable group, okay. which is the next more, most important group, eating lots of vegetables. Okay. And uh, vegetables are divided into five subcategories. We have a couple of them represented here. Dark orange, dark orange ones, we have the carrots, the carrots there, and dark green vegetables. Okay. And the dark green vegetables are very important, as are the dark orange, because they're especially high in vitamin A and fiber and lots of other phytonutrients. So that's a vegetable group Great. that we're really focused on here. Fruit. The fruit group comes next in the food guide pyramid. And this is a nice representation of different types of fruit here. We've got fresh fruit, we have some um, whole fresh fruit, we have some cut up fresh fruit, and we have some dried fruit. Okay. All of these are wonderful choices um, from the fruit group. And Excellent. these also represent different um, portion sizes. Great. Just a notation on the dried fruit. Just the quarter We want to go small on the dried fruit in terms of portion size. Because it's got lots of calories. Because it's concentrated, because it's been dehydrated. Terrific. Milk. The milk and dairy group, we have basically three foods here. We've got the um, milk, 
and this is a yogurt. This is a flavored yogurt. Great. And we have some cheese. And the thing to emphasize with these high calcium foods here is that we're looking for the low fat or non fat versions okay. of them. Great. Meats and beans. The meats and beans group. The meats and beans group are our protein foods. These are our, our um, high sources of protein. So we have the actual meat here. We have dried beans. We have some kidney beans here. Um, a half a cup of uh, cooked dried bean is a um, two ounces equivalent for, for the meat group. Okay. An egg, one egg is a one ounce equivalent. Um, this is peanut butter. Two tablespoons? Well, one tablespoon, one, tablespoon. one tablespoon equals a one ounce equivalent. Okay. People might typically eat two tablespoons, so right. that would count as, as two. And we have some seeds here. So okay. nuts and seeds, about a half an ounce of nuts and seeds also equals a one ounce equivalent Great. of meat. Okay, and then the mm -hmm. oils group, and we're measuring those in teaspoons. In That's teaspoons. the little one. Those are the little ones. That's here's the... here's our teaspoon here. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's that important to center. note. There, the Great. teaspoon right there. Okay. Yes. So, how can you personalize my pyramid to fit your needs? Well, if you go on to their website, mypyramid.gov, okay. and you go on um, on the right section, it says My Pyramid Plan and you click on it and we'll ask you for your age, your gender, and ask you to describe your physical activity level. Okay. And then it will <clears throat> shoot out a calorie level and then it will present to you and I'll show you right here. Oh wow, and it tells you exactly how much you need of each yes. one. Yes, it will show you Great. exactly how much you need. And this was an example of, of um, a 47 year old male who is moderately active and weighed Great. a certain weight and it should out how many Maybe some servings. Basic principles mm -hmm. to take away for people quickly in the in the minute we have left. We want to make some smart choices, I guess. Absolutely smart choices. Everything counts. So okay. we have to be careful what we're eating. We want to choose the whole grains when it comes to the grain group. We want to eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Uh, we want to look for low fat um, and non fat dairy foods. Um, we want to look at different alternatives in the meat group, not just meat all the time. You know, dried beans, nuts, and seeds are wonderful high protein foods right. that should be incorporated into okay. the diet. Great. All right. So for more information, we want to remind people to visit mypyramid.gov. Mm -hmm. And for more information about Mission Good Nutrition, we want you to log on to www.pottstownfoundation.org. We've got lots of good information there. The new food pyramid has something for everyone. It's called My Pyramid, www.mypyramid.gov, because you can personalize it based on your gender, age, and activity level. Remember, the key is balance. Lots of whole grains, lean protein, fruits and vegetables, and a diet low in fat.